Hi guys, um, Matthew here with Melig Perfumes. I'm doing this live on Instagram, probably will load this up on YouTube as well. So I'm just going to do some basic um, perfume talk. Hi Visaris, Kamensin. Hi guys, hi Nick. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, learning to make perfumes and talk about some of my perfumes here. I've got poor connection. And uh, so I'll start with a couple very good books. Guys, um, this first book, Listening to Scents. Um, basically, if you really want to enjoy smelling other, peop other people's perfumes or if you want to make your own, one of the most important things you should do is um, smell and classify the different types of things that you that 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 you um, that you're smelling. So and describing them with words. So this book is a great book. The reason it's called Listening to Sense is because the Japanese when they're talking about um, perfumery um, or especially about uh, smelling we say in English we say smelling uh, incense the Japanese actually say listening to incense so you're listening for information uh, listening to the story of the incense um, and they have a game where they sit in a circle and people pass around a small, hey Oz, and they have a game where they um, sit and smell and they pass around um, a little bowl of incense and each person smells it and they describe it and they try to, um, at the end of the game, they guess which incense it is. It's passed around and it's a great smelling game. So um, a bunch of different smelling games are actually described in this book, a Oswald, a bunch of smelling games are described in this book, you know, where two people are sitting across from a table and um, they smell different essential oils on tester strips and they express the nuances or differences between them. So what, what is the similarity or differences between sandalwood and cedar wood? Or they play matching games, like you might have a desk of 50 different um, essential oils and there's two uh, scent strips for each oil and then you try to match them up and turn it over to see if you got them right. Um, so this book, um, Listening to Scents, it's packed with all sorts of different smell identification games and it also has guides with like how to write about the way things smell, what sort of adjectives you can use, and the various different classifications of um, perfume materials. And she talks about different things like violet leaf absolute or galbanum or wintergreen, eucalyptus, lavender, pine, um, all sorts of different things. And you know, different types of families, woody families, spicy families, sandalwood families, conifer families, um, hay, oak moss, like farm type families of scents. This book is called Listening to Scents by Jennifer Pierce Rhyme, and I do highly recommend it. Um, I love classifying perfumes and I love, and I love classifying essential oils and I really do, um, enjoy that book it's a great book next book uh, it's a little deeper um, it's called scent and chemistry um, the molecular world of odors and it's by Philip Kraft and he has a great um, Facebook website page and it goes into detail about the different types of um, molecules and the different families so um, this is sort of a classification of different types of synthetic and natural molecules like scent molecules uh, it's fantastic it is a great book um, again this is scent and chemistry and finally another book that I do highly recommend is perfume and flavor 
materials of natural origin. And it's a classification book, but it also talks about all the major um, natural materials, what they smell like, how the essential oils are extracted, and uh, how they're made, and the different types of perfumes and accords they're used in, and the great number of different combinations. So with these three books, okay, perfumers, Perfume and Flavor, Materials of Natural Origin, Scent and Chemistry, um, Molecular World of Odors, and Jennifer Pierce Rhines, Listening to Scents, you can really start getting, digging into the rabbit hole of perfumery. I'm right here now. Um, I've got two apothecary desks and each one of these drawers is actually um, a different family of fragrances. So you might not know this or you might know this, but rose is an entire family of materials. There are hundreds and hundreds of different kinds of rose materials. There are only like six major ones, um, but I've got two drawers just for roses. And I have like two drawers of cedar type materials. And I have a drawer of just powdery materials. So these are my apothecary. Okay, we're back. Um, these are my 48 apothecary books. Uh, okay, next I'm going to talk about um, some of my perfumes. A little self uh, advertising, I guess. Um, Usually I leave it up to the reviewers, but I'll just tell you a little bit about my perfume. So my very first perfume here, um, this one is my Glowing Amber. And you can tell just by looking at the color of my perfumes. I do use a lot of naturals, but I also use kind of old 60 or 70 or 100 year old synthetics to bring out um, the richness of uh, the natural materials. So this glowing amber here, it's like most ambers. It's got, um, and what I do is I, I sometimes drop a little bit on like tissue paper. Um, and this, particular amber, um, the way I've made it unique, you know, ambers are usually very warm, comfortable, um, very uh, like a blanket, good for the winter, nearly edible, sweet um, perfumes, lots of base notes. But this particular amber, uh, what's unique about it is I used a kind of top note that smells like buttered popcorn. So um, this, my number 48, uh, glowing amber it's got a kind of buttery popcorn top note and then below that it's got deep boozy uh, kind of balsamic wood materials in the bottom so very sweet um, buttery milky and powdery so this is my glowing amber um, Melic perfumes glowing amber uh, number 48. All of this stuff is on Etsy or in my profile. Um, yeah, it's kind of neat. I love ambers. The base of amber is always vanilla, labdanum, and benzoin, um, although that can be modified in different ways. And to this, I added a bunch of different woods, and I added some butter materials and some kind of malty, deep, boozy materials and then again like the um, kind of buttered popcorn top note. So that's my glowing amber. Next I have my Russian birch tar and I've got a couple different versions of this. So one thing to let you guys know, um, my brand or my Etsy store, I've got about 14 perfumes and I've purposely made small batches. So every month I basically run out of a batch. I basically make the same thing, but I do make small adjustments to it. 
and I'm always looking to improve my perfumes. Um, so I do have two versions of this. I have one birch tar and leather perfume where it's just basically purely base notes. It's just a very rich fireplace, very leathery, um, almost like a barbecue f leather. Um, yeah, uh, almost like a barbecue leather fireplace. But this one, the latest batch, I've experimented with it. I've actually put some nice oak moss and I put a um, pine and grapefruit top note to it. So, and it's turned out quite well. And actually the top note was um, inspired by Terre de Hermes. Um, you know, perfumers are always analyzing um, other people's works. So this particular batch of birch tar and Russian leather, no doubt, it's very, um, very deep, very leathery, even right off the top. But this last batch, it's got a nice, um, uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's got a nice grapefruit opening to it. So we'll see how that turns out. So that's my birch tar and Russian leather. And it uses, and I should say, I use materials that are banned um, for the moment because I don't want to limit myself. I want to learn everything. And in here is birch tar, and it smells like a fireplace. It's a very deep, smoky material. Very deep and smoky. Okay. Next up is my peach um, number seven, which I do consider better than my civet cat although my civet cat Shepra is the most popular one I have I do like the number seven the peach um, my my Madeline peach Shepra because sort of by accident I discovered that peach so with this um, n my number seven Melly perfumes number seven peach um, and oak moss perfume, I discovered that peach goes really well with sweet, sugary cinnamon. So, yeah. And I was so pleased with this perfume, I actually named it after my mom. So my, my mother's name is Madeline. Um, this is, the above that I wrote does the combine into a powdery accord I'm making a powdery accord I'm making a hobby perfume now I'm not a fan of powdery accords so I'm trying to avoid that uh, yes yeah, so vanillin is always a little bit powdery benzoin is also a little bit powdery <clears throat> but you don't use vanillin or benzoin to make a powder perfume to make a powder perfume you use materials called the ionones, alpha ionone, beta ionone, methyl ionone, iralia, or orris butter, and orivone, or many other materials. It will be slightly powdery. Um, yeah, so my peach um, shipra, it's very, very vintage. Um, and I should say the reason that I'm tracing back all these sort of vintage perfumes is that I'm trying to learn the art of perfumery before there was a lot of limitations but also uh, when the materials were somewhat limited so back a hundred years ago there was maybe like a hundred materials now there are like 10,000 materials so I'm purposely retracing these old vintage formulas as a learning exercise for myself, if that makes sense. Anyways, if you like really vintage style perfumes, you would like any of my perfumes, particularly the Madeline Peach and Oak Moss, and you'd also like the um, Civet Cat Chypre. This um, Peach and Oak Moss, it has a lot of Ylang Ylang, it has a lot of cinnamon, it has a lot of jasmine. Um, so it's got that kind of fruity, 
sweet, spicy, sweet, and fruity. So Ylang Ylang, I don't know if you've ever really paid attention to it, but Ylang Ylang smells a little bit like jasmine. It's a white floral, but it also smells, it has traces of eugenol, which is the prime constituent in cinnamon. So, um, yeah, this is a fruity top note and then deep, spicy jasmine and ylang ylang um, dry down. Next perfume is my... Next perfume is my tobacco and frankincense. Sorry, and cardamom. So, if you like frankincense, if you like cardamom, this perfume is for you. There is a lot of cardamom in this perfume. And cardamom is a really interesting um, herb or spice. I'm not sure how to classify it. The reason I'm not a... I, I, I'm not sure how to classify cardamom because it's both cool and salty, but it's also peppery. So cardamom is like this cool, salty, peppery, um, definitely um, edible, um, something you can chew on on hot days, and I think it would be refreshing. But it's also a little bit spicy too. So so it's quite, it's like salt and pepper together. I don't I don't know. Cardamom is an interesting material. Um, so we've got that off the top notes. This is my um, tobacco, frankincense, and cardamom perfume here. You can see it here. And you see that deep, deep yellow color. That is actually saffron. Um, quite a bit of saffron tincture in this one as well. So I've never smelled a perfume quite like this one. And I really did kind of make it by accident. Um, it's got some nice cedar wood. Actually, the frankincense that I use in this um, tobacco frankincense and cardamom perfume. Um, the cedar wood is actually co-distilled. So it's cedar wood that's co-distilled with frankincense. So basically, they took frankincense, uh, the chemists. They took frankincense and they also took um, uh, cedar wood and they put it in the same distillation um, pot or chamber and they distilled the two together. So it's got this dusty, fresh, bright cardamom opening to it. And then the dry down is uh, kind of a dusty tobacco, but it's not my most intense tobacco. I've got one other tobacco perfume, uh, which is my latest release actually. Um, it's the golden guy and the golden guy you can't actually well if you're a smoker you can wear it on your skin but it's made from real pipe tobacco that's been tinctured in Chambord blackberry high quality blackberry French liqueur so this is my golden guy okay that color that is from pipe tobacco that's been tinctured in Chambord liquor. There's a couple other things in there to, to give it some lift and brightness, but um, this is 100% real tobacco. This smells, the Golden Guy is, is kind of like a bar area in Tokyo. It's a very old bar area and in these little bars, people can still smoke and drink. Um, of course you can drink, but you can also smoke inside the bars too. It's not like North America. Kind of a special area in, in Tokyo, okay? And this is a very unique perfume. Um, well, I tinctured pipe tobacco in perfumer's alcohol and Chambord, C-H-A-M-B-O-R-D, which is a blackberry liqueur. I tinctured that for like a couple months and then I slowly turned up the heat and I reduced it down to a resin and I did other things to it as well. 
yeah so this is a very sweet tobacco this smells like blackberries and blueberries this smells very um kind of smoky and it smells like a bar <laughs> But in a good way. It's a very classy, like red wine. Chambord is like this really dark um, blackberry liqueur. So it doesn't smell like cigarettes and beer, okay? Absolutely not. This is a sweet liqueur and sweet pipe tobacco. That's the golden guy, this one right here. Um, next one is honey and deer musk, which is pretty self explanatory. Um, It has rose, deer musk, sandalwood, and honey, honey accord, and beeswax absolute, which is, I have here. I don't know if you can see inside of it. So, yeah, you can actually. See that beeswax absolute? It's a very dark resinous material it's not that sweet actually it's fairly leathery and it's kind of a magical combination you know beeswax absolute is woody leathery almost like hay um it's musky it it smells like um bees actually have a kind of musk to them and deer musk is i have some pure deer musk right here this is a deer musk tincture. I haven't opened it. It says I should open it up at September 2020. Um, but this bottle here, I did open, and I do have deer musk inside here. Um, deer musk is really an amazing material. Um, it's nearly indescribable. It is, um, it, it smells like honey, it smells like sandalwood, deer musk does. It smells like the fur of an animal, it smells like leather. Um, yeah, beeswax absolute is animalic, um, but it's a resinous balsamic animalic. Be, uh, deer musk, on the other hand, is Deer musk, on the other hand, is a, um, leathery, um, body odor plus leather plus honey plus, it's just amazing. Deer musk is like, if you wear it, it's total pheromones. You, uh, you're going to get lucky. Deer musk smells like sex. It really does. It smells like hot sex under a blanket that's made with, um, you know, real, like real fur coats, okay, and suede and leather, okay? That's what deer musk smells like. It, it's also slightly urinous. It also smells a little bit like urine, which also smells like honey. So the idea. The idea with the deer musk and honey is this combination of um, materials. They just go along so well, especially with the sandalwood too. Okay. Next is my um, Vienna chocolate, which actually revolves around um, patchouli. Now, I'm pretty controversial. I think patchouli is better more complex, more beautiful than oud or agar wood. I know people are going to kill me. I, lo I just love, patchouli is probably my, f patchouli and jasmine are probably my two favorite materials. Um, patchouli, if you smell it, it smells both very, very dry, very dusty, but it smells like a damp, wet basement at the same time. Patchouli smells minty, but also very deep and sweet. Patchouli smells very woody, but it also smells like 
minty berries. And so, and aged patchouli actually has uh, chocolate facets to it. So what I did with this Vienna chocolate, what I did, and I extended it. Yes, patchouli is a material full of contradictions. And you really got to pay attention to it to, 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 to bring that out. It's a beautiful material. So I put more minty top notes on this. I added more depth to patchouli with um, some benzoin and some chocolate materials. This is a dark, bitter chocolate. It's a very dry, bitter chocolate with a minty top opening um, and some berry nuances through it, as well as some dry woods. And it's just turned out pretty good. Um, I sent one off, a sample off to a friend of mine um, who's in the perfumers. Uh, uh, basically, they own a brand, a large brand, and, and they liked it. They liked it. So I'm also happy with that. Um, my next perfume is my oak moss and florist florals and this one has where is my ambergris i didn't oh this one has real ambergris tincture and this is my ambergris tincture and the only way you are ever going to get real ambergris tincture in any perfume that you buy, it's gonna be from niche perfumers like myself. Rumor has it Guerlain uses a little bit of real ambergris in some of its perfumes. Chanel might use it a little bit of real ambergris in number five. I know that I use it in my oak moss and forest florals. This one is a very deep, powerful and dynamic vintage perfume. Um, she has an aldehyde soapy opening. She has, the longer the better. When it comes to deer musk and ambergris, tincture it for years. But for me, minimum is like six months. Um, this perfume, the oak moss and forest florals, it opens up with soapy soapy aldehydes and goes down to ylang ylang. There's a lot of rose and jasmine absolute, which I put in here. I finally got some new shipments in of the rose and jasmine absolute. And then it dries down to an oak moss and deep green leather. It's quite dynamic, um, quite powerful. Uh, there is a lot of naturals and the synthetics that are used in here are the ones used in perfumes from the 1920s. So, of course, I have my last perfume here is my Civet Cat Shepra. I also have a Mushin. I can talk about those later. My Civet Cat Shepra is my most popular perfume um, because... Uh, it's also very dynamic. My Civet Cat, it opens with a low, loads and loads of um, really fresh bergamot and then clary sage. Dries down towards ylang ylang, rose, um, becomes powdery as it dries down. And then the final dry down is uh, like a really musky, uh, not very musky, but enough, a little bit funky civet. Here's a bottle of real civet paste. Um, tincture you won't be able to see inside of it <laughs> but uh yeah it smells i love the smell of civet that's it right there that's civet tincture okay um i do love it and next week or the week after i should be getting in some hyracium some hyrax p you can look that up hyracium I'm getting about 50 grams of Hyracium Petrified um, Hyrax P. What else can I show you guys? I'm almost done. These are various types of agar woods that I use. I've got one, two, three, four, five different kinds of oud that I use. 
Um, let's see. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, I have to put this in the fridge. Well, I guess I'll talk with you guys later. Have an awesome day. Enjoy your um, Saturday night. Uh, this has been fun with me. I love talking about perfumes. Melig perfumes. Um, we make our perfumes in our little apartment here. Right over there. Keep exploring niche perfumers. Thanks for the support. Be awesome, guys. Um, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Hi, Domo.